Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Well, better than me, I just did this video and realised that my... Because in OBS, which is the software I use, is the... um shows my face when I'm talking. Everything I explained um, had my face over it. Anyway, it had my ugly mug over it all. So I've made my... um I've made me a little bit smaller. And also, I'll try and explain things over here a bit more so I'm not covering up all the information I'm talking about. OK, so what we're going to look at is Groove Agent, which is predominantly known for um, programming drums and percussion. But I want to look at it for melodic ideas. It can be really cool for melodic stuff. So taking a guitar line or taking a vocal line and making it a, using it as a sampler, I suppose. So you've got all the pads and um, creating chops and things like that so really useful in popular music now in pop stuff but all kinds of things if you want to add a bit of extra texture to a to a song or it doesn't have to be loud in the mix just something extra it can be really cool for that now if you've got cubase 9 onwards the chances are you've got sample track in cubase which i'm going to show that on a later video as well just really quickly if you wanted to get to sample track it's along the, you click on the lower zone, so up here you can click on this lower zone, or you can go do Control alt b um, drag in any information you want to work with, so audio, whatever, and drag it in, and you'll get the keys like you would with a, um, a traditional sampler, and you can use it that way, but I, there's something about Groove Agent, because Cubase for a long time didn't have a sampler, I got used to working in Groove Agent, and I quite—I just think it's quite um, creative what you can do with it. I actually like the pads as well, and hooking up a MIDI keyboard can be really cool because you can trigger them. The only problem is I've run out of USB ports, so I can't plug in my keyboard. Anyway, it doesn't matter for this. The first thing we've got to do is create a sample to work with. Now, I find it's better to work with something that's not too long. so. I'm using a tool in Cubase called Render in Place, and basically all that does is takes, um, be it a MIDI line or an audio line, and it creates a mirror of it um, on a different track, so it clones it onto a different track. Now I'll, I'll explain that by showing you. So say here, um, let's go at Podowski. So say we've got Podowski here, like a synth going. All I'm going to do is highlight it. Can you see here it starts here and ends here? And just to show you that, if I press P on the keyboard, you set this locator. I'll expand that out using the G and H tool a little bit. So there we go. And I'm going to go up to Edit. And you click on Edit and then go to Render in Place. Now, you could just use current settings. And I'll show you what, I don't want to spend too long on Render in Place, but I've gone to settings, and what I've changed from the default, I'm using complete signal path. Now, what I mean by that is if I'm using effects, say a reverb or a delay or compression, it's going to be in my signal path, so I'm going to go with that. So when I render this MIDI to audio, it's going to have that um, reverb and stuff on there. Also, I think as a default, it has this as mute, so at the bottom, source events, mute them after, and I I can see the logic in that. So say you've done a bass line in MIDI, and you render it to audio, and then you play back in Cubase. If it's not muted, it's going to play both of them, so that's not what you want. You want to work with the audio you've just rendered. But because I use this more for creating effects and creating um, interesting ideas to go along with the track, so it could be... Um, a vocalist has sung and then there's a phrase where there's a bit of a gap and you want the reverb just to blow up there with a, like um, some delay or something, some sort of effect. By using render in place and just choosing that end section, you can then just get a little bit of audio file that you can then go mad with and then create some really interesting effects. So I'll show you what I mean. Just rather than me rabbiting on about it, it's easier to see it. So I'm going to keep um, source of events unchanged, so the MIDI will still be there. And the only other thing I think I've changed is the tail. Now the tail is, again, if you're using effects and you've got no tail, it's going to, as soon as this ends here, this event ends, the audio is going to cut. We don't want that. Well, you might want that, but I wanted to show you that 
I've kept um, a little bit of a tail. Now, you can do it in seconds. I've done it in beats and bars, so it's basically going to give me one bar of a tail. So any reverb that's still or delay that carries on after this will carry on to the end of this bar, so it should grab it. Anyway, I'll show you by, by actually doing it. So here you go, we're on Podolsky. I've highlighted the track. I'm going to hit render. Cubase is going to think about it. If you've got a quick PC or Mac, this won't take as long as this. OK, here we go. B, there he is. Now, can you see that? It is the mirror of that. So if I, oh, not mute, solo. And then solo this one. So that's created that. Although, so that's render in place. We're not going to use um, that. We're going to use a vocal line. And in fact, this project, do you remember this project? Sorry about that. It's not the best composition in the world, but um, it was to demonstrate how many tracks you can get out of an old PC. But it had a vocal line in here, and I thought, well, why not just, just use this? So I'm going to take this vocal part here. Let me solo it a second. Take... And again, I'm not going to fall into that trap of my face obscuring what I'm going to be doing here. So I'm going to move that up. Hopefully I'll be out of the way. OK, so I'm going to take this vocal line and I'm going to put that into Groove Agent and then we're going to trigger each one of those little sections or transient of each. You see these sections here and we can do some pretty cool things with it. So first of all, before I put this into um, to Groove Agent, perhaps what would be a good idea, if I take off Snap, so um, J is, do remember Snap was up here? But if I, t that's, you can snap to bars or beats, so that's increments it moves to, but if Snap's off, it gives me freedom to move this anywhere I want. And the reason I'm doing that is so I haven't got this silence at the beginning, and at the end, let's take it there. This is the audio sample I'm going to use. So it's going to go from here to here. I can even press P on that to show you. So can you see on that locator? And what I'm going to do, now that I've done that, can you see the way I did that, actually? I probably didn't. I should have explained that. Using just at the bottom of each audio event or MIDI event, once you click towards the left-hand side at the bottom, you can actually move that where you want it to start and Again, move it where you want it to end. You can actually do it to the top and do a fade in and fade out as well, which is pretty cool. Um, now, if you find you're jumping in chunks, it's because you've got snap on here. So remember, you can click that off or press J. OK, let's render it. So we can keep all those settings that we had before. So edit, render in place. Oh with current settings. Let's see what it does. E yeah, 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 it's there. Cool. OK. Now, I'm just going to stick all those back just so I don't affect the original vo um, vocal line that we we're messing about with. Okie dokie. So here we go. That's the bit we've just made. Now, what I'm going to do is chuck that into Groove Agent. So. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to click on the plus button, which is the add track. I'm going to go across to instrument track, and can you see it's already on Groove Agent? But if you were on something else, say Pad Shop, so you click add track, instrument track, and Groove Agent's the one we want, and click add track. It's created us a blank um, Groove Agent, which is cool. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is take this audio event we've just created by using that render in place. You don't have to use render in place, sorry, I should say. Anything. You can drag anything, any audio into um, Groove Agent. It's just I wanted to use quite a small audio um, sample to show you. So I'm going to grab this, which is our audio event. Let me just undo that to put it back where it was. And then just drag it, left click on it and drag it on to the first pad. And there we go. So I've taken my bit of audio out of Cubase. 
try and move that so I'm not in the way. Okay, so I've taken that. You can drag it on into any pads, but I've dragged it onto C1. Okay. So now we've got the sample that we created in render in place inside Groove Agent, which is cool. Now, these along here, you see these little menus here. We're going to go across the slice. And can you see, we've it's set us some hit points up already, which look pretty good. It's, Cubase is pretty good at working this out, so it's working it out from the transient or the hit of each um, start of each note that she sings, or at least the loud parts of the transient. So, like if you hit a string, how quickly you hit that string. Um, we're going to create slices. And there we go. Can you see it's done this? So I've gone from the original sample, I've gone across to slice, and I've gone create um, slices. It's got remove slices here, so I can undo that if I wanted. You can th um, set the threshold if you wanted, if you felt that it didn't do very well. And also, this mode you can set to different things and manually create them if you want. But we'll rush on with this. I'm not, we, we're using transients, I'm sure it'll be cool. And can you see Cubase, what it's done in Groove Agent? It's worked out each pad a little section for us. And we can go further and edit these even more. Now, see on C1, if I go back to that, can you see here we've got the start? So I can move that. Oh, I've done a fade in. Well, you can fade it in as well. Oh, there we go. Well, let's start it there. And I can actually lengthen that as well if I wanted. So now, that's a bit longer, that's cool. Then you go to the second one if you wanted, and you can actually change where each one is. And I think if you go back to Slice, see how you can change these so you can see where each one is. So each one of these is the first sample. And if you want to actually see, so see this F sharp one on each one of these triggers, if you had a MIDI keyboard set up, so every time I press C1, that would trigger. And if you press the pad, it will actually give you this sort of, I suppose it's browny orangey color. So that one's not doing much at all, but I can, I can change that by moving this to there. And now he is doing something. So it'll actually show you each sample. And you can see here, I've moved that slightly, and you can move these anywhere you want. Can you just, as you click on each one of these hit points, you'll get these arrows towards the top. Well, it can be actually anywhere along that line. And you can move them about, which is cool. So now, I've got a group of samples. Some of them we might want to use, some we might not. That's fine. Now, if we go back to C1, a couple of things you might want to do. If you know, yeah, definitely, I'm going to use that sample. Let's right click on the sample on the pad itself and perhaps set color. And then you know that red one we're going to use. You can also rename it so you can go right click, rename pad if you want. Let's say, let's use that as well. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do, this is just the way I work really quickly. Find ones that I'm going to use and just set them to a color. Okay, we well doesn't. I'm not going to spend ages choosing those. So let's go with that. So you can see already how we can use these hit points to create these. So you're happy with them. And I know now that if I go into my piano roll, whenever I press E1, C1, G1, it says that D1. I've got kind of like um, a little bit of a slice I know I can use. Now in Groove Agent, you can go even further with this. We can go back to the main. So remember this along here. Experiment with all of these. But you see main here, I can change the volume and every one I click on, so if I changed, if I move the volume down on pad one, you see if I go to this pad here now, you can see it's gone back. So this could be really useful. Say this pad was slightly quieter and you wanted it all to be quite uniform. And that's quite a bit louder, but all of these are independent to each pad. So you could even use a bit of panning on each one, which could be pretty cool. Sorry, I'm just going to move that across again. I'm really conscious now that my 
my face is going to take away the what I'm explaining here. Hopefully it didn't when I was looking at these. So just in case it did, um, once we dragged the sample in to C1, we then used these along here, went to slices, clicked create slices on remove slices now because we created them. We had it on transient mode, it worked fine, it created a load of slices for us. By all means, experiment with those. And we've just color coordinated the track, the pad. Okay, now, how about, we've used panning, what about coarse tune? So look, here, why don't we make this an octave lower by going down 12 semitones? And how about that one as well? So now we've got... We could also, of course, go up and... And go up. That's fine as well to do that, so you can move it up an octave by 12 semitones. Okay, you've also got here pitch. Now pitch gives us an envelope that we can actually move that envelope so the pitch will go woo, woo. apart from it's not changing anything because it's this amount of envelope we want to use so if we click that up can you see now it's affecting it and if I click that all the way up <laughs> it makes it very mad but you never know the might you can again you can do all sorts of things in there but it's worth having a look through that, the pitch envelope as well, which can be quite cool. And I think you've got that under uh, amp as well, you have. So there's all kinds of things you can do in this, but all I wanted to do today was set up, render a sample, create a small little sample, stick it into Groove Agent, and then have a look at how we can create our own little chop. So you see here with C1, D1, E1 and G1. That's what I've got to remember when I get into the piano roll. And then we're going to see if we can create some sort of vocal chop along with my track. Obviously, we can. I could have been a little bit more. Um, I just moved that across. Do you see what I did there? I just dragged them over just to. In fact, let me do that. That can be quite useful in Cubase, actually. Um, it's certainly in Groove Agent. Do you see I just left clicked on the pad? Now. I've moved them so I don't have to remember those. Just, it's fine in the piano roll the way I was going to do it, but now it's C1, C sharp 1, D, and D sharp 1. So they're all living next door to each other, so to speak. Okay, let's just move Groove Agent up a bit, expand him out, and I'm going to go from the start of this bar to the end of this bar. And can you see when I did that? is all over the place. It's because I haven't got snap on. So just stick snap on and I know it's going to be accurate to a beat. Okay, so I'm in Groove Agent. I've set my samples up. I'm going to double click in this. I've made a one bar highlight with these regions. Double click in this area and it's made me an editable area or an editable region I can work in. I can then double click in here and it brings up the piano roll, which is great. Now, Scroll down to C1. It's made my sample now. Have I got any others as well that might be quite useful? We can do, we can go back in and experiment in a minute. Let's have a look how bad this sounds. Okay. Bad. <laughs> There's a bit of trial and error involved in this. <laughs> oh, it's getting, it's getting, it's getting better. Bear with me. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> ah, I forgot the, I forgot the sharps. Yeah, of course. I set all the pads, didn't I, next to each other? Damn it. Okay, let's have a look now. All right. I've... Okay. Now, you know when we use the piano roll, we've got it set to 16th notes at the moment. That means I can click on this 
and I can do anything in 16, so I can set that to 32s if I want it to be like really proper choppy and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go back to 16, so it's easier for me to see. Okay. Okay, let's have a look now. Okay, that's horrendous. <laughs> Okay, it's we get we get. Oh, on oh, that's the one I'm gonna get rid of. Okay, we get we get in there we get in there. Okay, let's move him there. Okay, I'm not gonna spend ages on this. Sorry. And can you see with that? Sometimes it comes out better than others, but you can go back in. Remember on that edit instrument, and either go back to you, you can. Remember, you can go back to your slice and actually change where this is, or even change, go back to the main and change the course tuning. So, and experiment with them. So you can keep going back to the drawing board, so to speak, if it sounds that bad. Okay, now it doesn't end there as well. We could even go on the click on the E on um, Groove Agent and add in perhaps a stereo delay. So what's that? I've got fours in the left and a wood fours in the left and one eighths in the right. Okay, well, I'm not even going to edit that. I'm going to leave it as it is. And have I got any send effects? I have. I've got reverb. Maybe add a bit of reverb as well. What could go wrong? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to mute that. The reason is I muted that. That was the, you know, the bit of audio we made by rendering. So now, I may bring him in again. And then perhaps bring the volume up. Sorry, that was a bit quiet. And of course, it doesn't have to be the same each time because you've got it in the piano roll now. You've got it as MIDI. You can keep changing that. So it really is endless what you can do with it. But just, just what I mean about adding like a little bit of texture in there, a bit of a... It can be pretty cool. Okay, have a go. Good luck. <laughs> 